Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nocturnal Gaming Network. My name is Zira and today we are playing Assassin's Creed number two. Through the Volpe, La Volpe, we learned that there is some treachery going on and that the Medici are in danger. So we must go and save them. We must prevent the conspirators from attacking the Medici family. Aha. We must locate Francesco de Pazzi. Oh. And I can't climb. What a coincidence. We have some red right there. And there is Francesco. Alright, let's get our blades out. I I cannot get our blades out. There's Lorenzo, his wife. There's Giuliano, Lorenzo's brother. Where's Francesco? There he is. Time to strike. Well, that was epic. Your day is done, Lorenzo. Your entire family dies by my sword. Fuck! I kill you! Oh, well, there is a lot of people here. Come on. Somebody. Uh, okay. So who are these guards? We have some ye some yellow guys. These must be like Lorenzo's bodyguards or something. Oh no, Lorenzo. Alright. We have engaged the Potsy guy. We must get rid of these guards. There we go. Alright, there's one of them attacking Lorenzo. Let's take care of him next. And he's gone. Alright. Now we've got this one final guard. There we go. All right, now for the Potsy. All right. Come on. All right, we need, let's get our hidden blades out. Let's be ready for this. Ow. Wow. Maybe getting the hidden blades out wasn't the best idea. Alright, I'm ready. Or not. Can I not? Maybe I can't counter. Because there's no way I've missed all of these counters. Alright. Ah! Oh. What are you doing? Don't you run away from me. Come back here. Hey! What? What was that? He get he I failed because he ran away? What was that, Ubisoft? Really? Alright. Alright, we need to we need to get over there by Lorenzo. 
need help. All right. There we are. Okay, Lorenzo is almost safe. Maybe not almost safe. All right, I need to get over there. Come on, Lorenzo. All right. Come on. Get rid of that. Aha! All right. Francesco de Pazzi is the only one left. Oh. Oh. My objective is to defend him. It isn't to chase after Francesco. Ah. So that explains it. I lost because I'm stupid. You saved my life. It's nothing. But the man who did this to you has to pay. Ah, not now. I need help first. To my home. People I trust them. Can you? Ah. Follow my lead. Okay, what about that doctor? Why can't we just... I'm losing a lot of blood. Let's go to the doctor, then. Hang on, signore. I'm moving as fast as I can. Here. Come to the doctor. Our traditional remedies. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... Francesco de Pazzi! I'll kill him. I'll wipe his entire family from the city. Hmm. They'll be erased! So, I can't Conserve use the doctor to help. I'll be delivering a course. We're almost there now. Alright, let's help out these guards, too, while we're at it. Ooh, we can lower our wanted level. Things are, things are looking up for us. Falling. Oh boy. Oh, okay. There are lots of guards here. I'm more than capable of cutting you. You just going. I've not forgotten. Come on. Stay close. All right. Alright, I need to go this way, so I'm not going to bother with those guards. Lorenzo's men can take care of themselves, maybe. I wonder if these guys just keep coming. I've not forgotten how to win. I had hoped combat could be avoided. Alright, this way. Trust me, combat's avoided. You're not doing anything. Uh did I go the wrong way? No, I just didn't go all the way. Okay. I've not forgotten. Oh no. Okay, I got him. We're fine. Get down, Aura. With you. Oh, he's just gonna jump down here with me. That's awesome. Oh. 
Oh. Hello. You gonna attack me? Queen, let's do it. Yes. Now. We have. Ah. Uh. I've not. So. We have a couple more. Oh, how did I get on the ground? I've not I got you. I got you, Lorenzo. You're fine. Everything's okay. You can just stand there. It's fine. Segway. Lorenzo has been wounded. Aprite la porta. What's the password? Polizia. Open the maledetta porta. By the Christ greatest. Come in, quickly. The city is at war. Hurry. Wait. I am in your debt. Tell me, why did you help me? You are not the only one who lost a brother to the Pazzi. My name is Ezio Auditore. Ah. You're Giovanni's son. Your father was a good man. He understood honor, loyalty. The Pazzi thugs are storming the Palazzo della Signoria. We cannot hold them off much longer. No. If they get inside, they'll murder our supporters and put their own devils in power. Then my survival would mean nothing. I have to... Uh, uh, Francesco de Pazzi. Help save our city, Auditore. Kill him. Just wave me away, huh? Yeah. Don't worry, I will take care of Francesco. Now. The Polizano. Okay. Where am I? Right here. So, the villa chest is full right now. So, I think that it's... Should we? No, no, we shouldn't. Money... Money can't be my motive. I must save the city of Florence from... Oh, San Lorenzo. Okay, so... Florence can wait. I need to find this glyph before I go anywhere. What was that? I saw something. Something sparkly. Oh, that's a bench. What is San Lorenzo? Let's... Let's take a quick trip to the viewpoint, wherever that is. Ooh, a feather. Okay. Where is the viewpoint? Ah, right up here. Ah, uh, okay. So... Go up and then jump to the side. Yes, that is exactly what I needed to do. Okay. Oh, San Lorenzo is a great big structure. Hmm. Is that that is oh there it is sneaky sneaky all right here's the monk the monkey the nazca monkey do you see what's going on oh, not yet but you will
All right, so we have found the glyph at San Lorenzo. And we have added one more to our collection of the truth. What are we up to now? So we're up to five. So we're a quarter of the way there. And what do we do? We have we have a couple entries, don't we? Lorenzo. Okay, so we have a couple guys here. Let's go through and read these. So we have Giuliano de Medici. 1453 is his birth year, and he was a noble. The playboy to his brother Lorenzo's statesman, Giuliano de Medici was well known for his famous jousting tournaments and handsome physique, and his illegitimate child. When Giuliano was killed by the Carpazzi conspiracy, his son Giulio was considered legitimate due to a loophole in canon law that allowed marriages to occur privately between two people, meaning that his parents could have agreed that they were actually married without telling anyone about it. Watch out, Catholics. Your mistresses have more power than you think. Uh-oh. Once legitimately a Medici, the child of a trades tradesman's daughter went on to become Pope Clementine the Seventh. Get this, Clementine VII was Pope during the sack of Rome in 1527, during which he was taken prisoner in the Castello de Sant'Angelo. He escaped his caps captors disguised as a tradesman. Oh, wow. Son of a tradesman's daughter escapes poor past to become Pope, only to become a tradesman, tradesman once more. The irony. Sean... Sean, your humor is funny, guy. So we have Lorenzo de' Medici, born in 1449. He is the ruler of Florence. Simultaneously keeping the dream of the Florentine Republic alive while leaving the people with very le little legitimate power, Lorenzo de' Medici deftly ruled Renaissance Florence during its golden age. Lorenzo's grandfather, Cosimo, built the Medici Bank, creating one of the most powerful financial institutions in Europe and becoming fabulously rich in the process. Considered the smartest of Cosimo's grandchildren, Lorenzo was always being sent on diplomatic missions as a child. Wow. Although his father was inept and sickly, his mother was a poet. She introduced Lorenzo to many of the prominent artists of the day, instilling in him a love of art and culture. In 1496, when he was only 20, Lorenzo became the head of the Medici family, at which point he quickly gained control of the Florentine government through friends in the city council, payoffs, strategic marriages, and threats. But Florence prospered with Lorenzo as its puppeteer. A peace was made between the warring states of Italy and several masterpieces of Renaissance art by the likes of Botticelli and Michelangelo were made under his care. Ultimately, Lorenzo was happier writing poetry and shadow governing than directing his family bank. During his lifetime, several branches of the bank collapsed and the Medici assets were wasted on frivol frivolities such as jousting tournaments. Lorenzo died in 1492, nearly broke. He was unable to prevent the popular backlash against his rich lifestyle and the mad monk Savonarella's rise to power. Alright, let us look at the Polizano. Not the Polizano. Polizano is his name. I thought it was like a police force or something. So, born in 1454, he was a scholar and a poet. Somewhat of a prodigy, Polizano learned Latin and Greek at age 10, and by 18 had already become a published author. Lorenzo di Medici acted, hired him to act as tutor for his children and made sure he received a post at the Studio Fiorentino, 
Unfortunately, Pugliazano must not have been everyone's favorite instructor. He died of arsenic poisoning in 1494, probably murdered by Piero di Medici, his former student. Okay, and last, we have Francesco di Pazzi. We will be assassinating him soon. Francesco di Pazzi. Brought up as a noble in a city captivated by the newly rich Medici family, Francesco was taught to hate the middle class and its social climbers. Dismayed, he watched as the Medici bank eclipsed his own and centuries of influence over the Florentine government slipped away. It looks like the Spaniard offered him a solution. Rather than compete in something as dirty as banking, Francesco only had to do one thing for the Templars, one thing to put the middle class in their place for good. Kill the Medici. Giovanni Auditore tried to stop Francesco by putting him in jail. But the Templars took care of that. Hmm. Okay. So, now we must begin the mission. We must end Francesco de Pazzi once and for all. Well, that's one way to get down. All right. Signore, I saw Francesco lead a battalion around the back of the Palazzo della Signoria. I fear he may be seeking another way in. Go, before it's too late. Do what you can! Find and kill Francesco di Pazzi. All right. So, Polenzina, we will, we will take care of this threat. All right. What is going on? All right. Let's let's just run straight to wherever we need to go. That always works. Especially since the city's in turmoil and the guards don't have time for me. That's perfect. Although we should lower our notoriety while we are at it. Friends, be warned. He kills for sport. There is no method who is brute. There is method. I don't just kill for sport. Can I can I steal steal my money back for him? The guard have little oh, for you. oh, I can. I can steal my money back. That is awesome. Oh boy. So, there are lots of people here. Let's just kind of run through. So much for that. <laughs> I don't really want to deal with them. Well, seems like they want to deal with me here. Okay, where is Francesco? You again! Why aren't you dead? Men! Slaughter him! Oh. Hello. All right, we must climb the Palazzo di Signoria. Well, I thought we could just climb up this wall, but apparently not. Apparently we can't. We'll have to do it the old-fashioned way. Let's see here. This guy... Looks like he's in a very precarious perch up here. Goodbye. Oh! <laughs> what was that? Was that? What is going on here? Ah. 
So Ezio can just kind of bounce. He's he's like some magical spring person. Oh, they're gonna run away and jump off the building for me? Huh. Okay. I could deal with that. Come on. Really? Come on. Death shall be my reward. All right, Francesco. Gods! Gods! No one's coming. It's just us now. Maledetto che il diavolo ti porti! Stami lontano! How the hell did he get down? What was what sorcery is this? He just jumped off the cliff and somehow didn't die? Take that. Now Firenze will judge you for what you've done. It's over. It's all over. Meglio essere felici in questa vita. Aspirare a esserlo nella prossima requiesca in pace. Libertà! 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 Popolo e libertà! Libertà! Francesco? Uh oh. Something tells me that's not what he was thinking would happen. Uh oh. We getting pulled out of the animus? The Republica Florentina, 1478. Ah, Lorenzo. When I was six years old, I fell into the Arno. I soon found myself drifting down and into darkness. Certain my life was at an end. Instead, I woke to the sound of my mother weeping. At her side stood a stranger, soaking and smiling at me. My mother explained that he had saved me. And so began a long and prosperous relationship between two families. Yours and mine. I am sorry I could not save your father and brothers. You have nothing to apologize for. I believe Jacobo de Pazzi played a part in their deaths. The attack on you as well. I need to find him. That coward fled before we could arrest him. Have you any leads? No. They've hidden themselves well. They? Jacopo was not the only conspirator to escape. If they work with Jacopo, they were surely involved in the plot against my family as well. Give me their names. 
Antonio Maffei, Archbishop Francesco Salviati, Stefano da Bagnone, and Bernardo Baroncelli. Bene, I will go and see my uncle. He has men stationed in the countryside. Wait, before you go. A codex page. I took it from the files of Francesco de Pazzi, seeing as he clearly no longer needs it. I've always had an interest in things of antiquity, as did your father. It is meaningful to me as well. Then consider it a gift. Che il Signore ci protegga. Pazzi conspirators. Jacopo di Pazzi, the money. This guy was the head of the Pazzi family, and he ran their banking business. An associate of Lorenzo de' Medici, he had nothing against him personally. So he hired four Templar hitmen to take care of the situation for him. Bernardo di Bandino Baroncelli. Brought up to hate the Medici family for the exile of his cousins, Baroncelli ran the numbers in the Pazzi bank by day and murdered for the Templars at night. It was Baroncelli who delivered the first blow. Stefano de Bagnone. Known for his cruelty, Bagnone was trained in Rome as a Templar butcher. It was Bagnone who stabbed Lorenzo de' Medici in the back. Antonio Maffei. Witness to the sacking of Volterra by Florentine mercenaries, Maffei blamed Lorenzo. He joined the Templars to seek revenge. It was Maffei who slashed Lorenzo's neck. Archbishop Francesco Salviati. Convinced he would be the next Archbishop of Florence, Salviati was enraged when Lorenzo stood in his way. But the Templars were there to heal his wounds. It was Salviati who marched their troops into the city. Hmm. Interesting. So we now have some information on the rest of these conspirators. What do we have for recent entries? All right. So, did we read? I do not believe we read anything about San Lorenzo. So let's do that right now. The church which all the Medici went to die. San Lorenzo claims to be the oldest in Florence. It was consecrated in 393, while still outside the city walls. Michelangelo designed the inner facade, while Filippo Bernicelli, the creator of the Santa Maria di Fiore's dome, designed the layout. He died before the church was finished, and several of his designs were subsequently modified. Containing nearly 50 tombs, the Medici crypt was intended to house the Holy Sepulchre containing the body of Christ at its center. However, attempts to buy and then to steal it from Jerusalem failed, proving that bankers can buy a lot of things, but not integrity. Hmm. So... What do we have for targets? Just this information. Hmm. Okay. So. We must go back to... Where? Back to Leonardo. Hmm. Okay. Let us go. We will we will find our way back to Da Vinci. Let's see what wonderful things he has for us. He always has information and usually modifications to our wonderful arsenal. Let's get back up on the roof because it's gonna be a more direct route. Almost there. Ooh. 
Get down there, Ezio. Ah, can get some money while we're here, too. Okay. Boom. And through this door, and right around the corner to the right. What do you have for us, Leonardo? Ezio, thank God you're all right. This madness with the Medici and the Pazzi, is this why you pursued Francesco? Not exactly. Well, whatever your reasons, the city's safe again thanks to you. Now tell me, how may I be of service? Ah, another page. Aha, it's a similar cipher to the last one. This won't take long. Interesting. Mm. Indeed. I see. It's another blade design. For delivering poison. Can you build it? See, it won't take very long. I just need to find a way to hollow out the blade without sacrificing the... It's all right, Leonardo. Just do what you need to do. All done. I filled your blade with a bit of poison to start with. Should you run out, just visit a doctor. Poison? From a doctor? In high enough doses, that which cures can kill. I am in your debt once more, my friend. Anytime, Ezio. Anytime. Hmm. So we have some poison. Interesting. So we have five doses of poison. So contact with Poison Blade will cause an enemy to go berserk after a small delay and then die. Epic. Alright, where to now? Ah, to Monteregione. So we will head there. And that is where we will end the episode. Special Assassin's Tomb icon has been added to the map, revealing the location, I believe it was, of the Auditor family crypt. Hmm. There is much going on. So... Let's first collect our money here. And we have 22,000 florins. All right. I'm probably going to put most of that into um, upgrading Monteregione. But before we do, I want to go to the marketplace and see what we have available. First, let's start with the tailors. What, uh, what do we have for pouches? So... How much is that? Oh, my phone grade. Okay, there's no price. Okay. So apparently I didn't need to buy that one. So we've got two medicine pouch upgrades. Your friends, eh? great and then what do we here. have at the blacksmith? Let's repair our armor first. Ooh, and we can get a full set of this Helmschmid armor. But that's going to completely wipe out our money. We have 
Ha ha, a falchion. That might be our next weapon here. Or the Syrian. Now the Syrian sword doesn't really matter. Is that Altair's sword? No, that's not Altair's sword. It looks like it, though. Alright, so the captain sword has one, two, one. And this has two deflect. So that, okay, so the falchion, the Florentine falchion, is a weapon that I kind of want. The Channel Cinque Dea for 4,000 gives us plus two to everything. So let's start with this. That gives us a good small weapon. Alright, and I can pickpocket the knives. What does the mar art merchant have? I don't think the art merchant's gonna have anything that I feel like buying. Oh, let's get some paintings. Okay, and a treasure map for Montregione. That one I will buy. Alright, so at some point we can go grab the rest of that treasure. But for now, we will go update our uh, building here. Oops. Get down there. Alright, let's start by talking with this architect guy here. Buongiorno. Salute, Sir Ezio. Shall we take a look at the list? Salute to you. Yes, we shall. We are going to finish the bank, because the bank always gets us good stuff. And then we can upgrade the blacksmith. And I upgraded the art merchant. I didn't want to upgrade the art merchant. Hmm. Let's reopen the mines. wonder if... Buon viaggio! Yes. Okay, so that's that's fine. Wow, Monteregion's valley value just oh, sharply idea. increased. Haha, ha, so now we are bringing in 3,571 florins every 20 minutes. Amazing. So our shops, we almost have all of our shops. Well, not almost. We don't have all of our shops upgraded, but, you know, we're getting there. The shops are currently bringing in the most money, though. That's for sure. A presto, Ezio. Thank you, Claudia. Okay, so next time when we come back... Ezio! <laughs> come in, come in. To what do we owe the honor? Oh, okay. Next time when we come back, we will speak with our uncle. And we will continue our quest to bring the Pazzi family down and avenge the murders of our family. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Zira, and this is the Nocturnal Gaming Network. Have a wonderful night.